Unit 6, Lesson 3, Components of the Respiratory System. All right, it's time to get to the meat of the system. So, the respiratory system consists of the lungs and everything it takes to get air into and out of the lungs. We'll start at the beginning. Air gets into our body through our mouth and nose. So those are the first two components of the respiratory system. The mouth and nose do several things for us other than just bringing the air in. The nose, and to a lesser degree the mouth, warm, humidify, and filter the air we breathe in. In the skeletal system, we talked about the inferior conchi as being bones in the nose. There are actually three conchi per side, the inferior, middle, and superior conchi. The conchi are basically shelves extending into the nasal cavity. When you breathe in, the air passes through the space between the conchi. The entire nasal cavity is lined with mucous membranes, which are warm, moist, and sticky. Pollen, dust, bugs, and everything else we breathe in gets stuck to the mucus, while the air passing over all of that mucus becomes warm and moist, just as your lungs like it. If you've ever cleaned out a wood stove and then blown your nose, you've seen how well the nose can trap unwanted debris in the air. The oral cavity, or mouth, and the nasal cavity end at the pharynx. The pharynx, also known simply as the throat, is divided into the nasopharynx, the oropharynx, and the laryngopharynx. At the bottom of the pharynx, the tube splits and becomes the esophagus, which leads to the stomach, and the trachea, or windpipe, which leads to the lungs. The trachea is anterior to the esophagus. The trachea then divides into the left and right bronchi. Bronchus is the singular. The bronchi lead into the lungs, where they divide and divide and become bronchioles, which continue to divide and divide into smaller and smaller tubes. Finally, at the ends of those tiniest of bronchioles are the alveoli, or air sacs of the lungs. One study showed that each lung contains about 240 million alveoli. Before we go on, we're going to step outside of the lungs for a moment. How do the lungs draw air deep inside and then exhale, ridding us of carbon dioxide? In our first lessons, we talked about the diaphragm, a muscle which separates the thoracic cavity from the abdominal cavity. When this dome-like muscle contracts, it gives the lungs more space, which creates a vacuum, and air rushes in to fill that vacuum. When the diaphragm relaxes, it moves back up towards the head, which gives the lungs less room, which causes the air to again move out of the lungs, carrying the waste CO2. While the diaphragm is the major muscular player here, the intercostal muscles, or the muscles between the ribs, play a role as well. Okay, back to the lungs. Now we've reached the spot where the action happens. As we discussed in the last unit, those alveoli are wrapped in microscopic capillaries, blood vessels so tiny that blood cells have to line up single file to pass through, so fine that molecules of gas and liquid can pass right through. It is here that the respiratory system fulfills its promise. As blood enters this capillary net, it releases the carbon dioxide it has carried and picks up fresh oxygen. Then, when the diaphragm relaxes, it expels the CO2 from the body, and then tightens and draws fresh oxygen back in. So, those are the components of the respiratory system. First, the airway, which consists of mouth, nose, pharynx, trachea, bronchi, bronchioles, and alveoli. The lungs house much of that airway, from the bronchi down. Then we have the diaphragm and intercostal muscles which help to increase and reduce the size of the chest, causing air to flow in and out. Okay, so check out the links and the recap, and please do complete that exercise. Then click the big red button to move on to the last lesson of the unit, where we'll look at some of the diseases and disorders of the respiratory system.